storm in the heart. A life at sea lets you know how dead inside the landlocked living actually are. There is nothing quite like the inhale of the salt in the fresh air above the sounds of the water's cut. It's my first voyage on this sloop with this crew. As of this entry, we are three quarters of the way to our destination. I favor the breeze of this boat. Every ship makes its own breeze. You haven't lived until you've worked a few different kinds of them, differing in size. I worked a man of war. Everything is easy after that. In a way. Fewer men on the sloop here. So I guess you could say there is more work for each man. You find your own way. To each their own. I found mine. I don't have to do so much. Life on the sloop. You have a good navigator, and the maps matter less. That's why the captain's partner slipped me an extra coin. But not just any coin, a doubloon. Just don't let the man get to you, he said as he waved us off, promising he'd whistle songs for us till we get back. The deal is, when we see an island, I get to spear my own fish. I keep them steered out of trouble with the crown, and they feed my spear the opportunities. I have my favorite spear, Claire, named after my dead wife, God rest her. I don't know why I named it that. There was nothing aggressive or spear-like about Claire. Can't let go, I guess. So I take it out on the ocean, revisiting my old habit of the rough beard spawning life of the seven seas. Same story as ever. I'm perfect for this band of rough and stray dog sloopers. Had another argument with the captain. Cabin boy is not swabbing the deck nearly enough. The floorboards will shrink and then water gets in. Told him that leads to mutiny. I see the boy swabbing things a bit more. Nevertheless, I was pretty riled by the argument with the captain. Partner was right about him. I just think of that doubloon of mine. Thankfully, we were dropping anchor near an island, and I spotted a nice reef. It was a deep one, too, by the looks of it. Excuse me. I get a flash when I mention that place, because, well, that's where it happened. I must collect myself as I recount my story. It went like this. I took the boat out and began scouting the reef for unwanted guests. Sharks and things. Or mayhaps I wanted to encounter one. There's only so much you can do before you have to drop down inside and, well, see what's down there for yourself. I remember that I was so heated and angry at that point from the argument. I could have willed a bull shark to find me just so I could kill it or die trying. My spear was hungry. My temper was ravenous. but a bull shark was not what I found. It was something I wasn't prepared for. The first time I spied her, I crossed myself. I quickly darted behind a nearby tower of kelp. I was terrified. Didn't know I had it in me to be this scared of anything now. Well, apart from that Gibraltar hurricane three years ago, it sent me into nightmares for six months. All the rude, howling wind, the bullet-like spray, splintering masts, the thunder roared like a crazed lion in the night sky, and the cries of drowning men abducted by those greedy waves, gaping outstretched like watery hands of the furious Neptune. I still hear those cries, and Claire there for me when I'd wake up. Hey. But now I felt a different, 
inner storm, and the thunder was the numbing beat of my heart. I was so relieved that my vantage point allowed me to experience her unseen. You see, I was horrified at the sight of the creature. Her body was, well, like nothing I'd ever seen. She was obviously evil, not of God's earth, and as I recount the vision to you, I'm sure you shall see what I mean. She was half a she and half an it. I know I will sound insane to you. Well, I'm coming out with it. Half an octopus. Yes, the top portion was most obviously the fair and alluring female persuasion of our civilized species humans. Maybe the most beautiful I had ever seen. Nay, but civilized this beast was not. And I mean the rest of her. What she was doing with it. As I watched her, she seemed disturbed by her solitary position. You could see the ardent inclination in her, her six tentacles writhing all around her, and like a lover, her toned and slender arms as well. It was like she were calling out to a mate or a distant paramour by willing her burgeoning sensual wants hither and thither. I found those tentacles frightful, alien, and fascinating. I was transfixed. How odd it was to feel these things that I thought died with Claire. Strange to feel such confusion seeing this beast and intoxicating. I must be dreaming, I thought. That is what this is. And yet it felt so real. I have heard many a mariner tell of a mermaid who captured his heart, but what was this sensuous, horrifying animal? Nay, a dream this is, I thought. Another nightmare from terrible Neptune laughing cruelly at me. And she... She is a succubus come to possess my senses. For those are the dreams that feel most real, they say. Let this be a dream from which I can wake into my holy world again. I had to know if I was awake. I pinched myself and felt the pain. I wouldn't believe it, so I pricked my spear into my calf, wanting desperately for it to be false. Alas, I was here. The thing I was witnessing behind strands of floating kelp was real. This myriad of occurrences in my mind happened in such waves that it felt like an eternity. You would never think I was underwater this whole time. I discovered this oceanic demon only a minute ago. I still had minutes for my mortal lungs, whole minutes before I had to return to the surface. I gripped my spear tighter, trying to fight a growing urge to... What? What am I feeling as I look upon this strange woman? No, she is a demon, yet such a beautiful demon. I began to feel an ache. My heart went out to her, how lonely she seemed. The arms, and they all kept moving. Those tentacles undulating and creeping all over her skin. And she began to change color. When I first glimpsed her, she was a darkish thing contrasted with that white, sunless skin. And now, she was growing pink and red and tanned and hot. And then she almost seemed to glow like fire. How beautiful. Yes, she was. If not for the ribbon-like tentacles, she could conjure the most insatiable lustful urges in any man. And I fell desperately in love with her. She was pure, many-tentacled desire. She was pleasure herself. She was not mine. And I hated that. I wanted my net. 
I needed to upset her. I needed to see her pleading eyes through the net. I needed to be her lord. I would capture her and would take her away. For the hate I felt, the cruelty I wished, I could have sold her to the aquatic freak show. But how could I? I was in love. Yes, I was in love with the creature. All it takes is minutes to fall in love with a mermaid. I wanted her to love me, this lonesome widower. I'd be her lord, hey, her kind, yet terrible lord. There was a faint clang that drew my focus away from her. My own spear hit the coral below my hiding place. Damn it. Somehow this love-struck bastard let his fingers release the weapon. Could I swiftly restore it to my clutches? Quickly, I gauged the distance, looking to the spear and then turning to check back on her. Only now, it seemed she heard it too. She had left her place. She had moved right on up to the kelp that was now all that separated us. My eyes fell down to her lips, so pillow soft and red. And slowly she licked them. I felt weak. With all I had left, I looked back to her eyes. The darkest brown eyes I've ever seen.